Okay, y'all, so I'm just going to come off the dome with this because it really did get pretty ugly around here <clears throat> after he was uh, trying to uh, whistle and be negative while I was telling what was going on because they not finna be sitting over here antagonizing me about my child. So, first of all, um, I had got dressed after, you know, I finished that video. I had went under some people... Uh, videos and commented and told them when I first made my platforms, I was like, they're trying to kill me and my baby. I'm pregnant um, in America. And the uh, people started responding to my comments and stuff, telling me, like, giving me advice about what to do. So I know I need to keep speaking out. But anyway, so I told him, I was like, I'm finna just go um, for, I'm finna go, I'll be back because I needed to just get away from him and try to see if I could make some phone calls, if there was somebody who I could just go chill over there for a little bit instead of being over here. Um, and when I, I came back into the room, cause I forgot something, so I had got dressed and I came, I went back into the room and he came into the room and I already knew he was gonna do that because this is what all the black people do when they find out that I am with child and when they find out the truth about what these people did to us um, and they see that the evidence is there and that nobody still has done anything all over the country um, but continue to try to cover this up all of a sudden they try to hurry up and put you out of their home or whatever and then if you try to cover it up which I did do when I first got here I tried to cover it up um, I didn't know if he knew or not, but I wasn't telling him and being forthcoming with the information because I know how they do you when they think that, oh, you're pregnant uh, and your baby going to die and you and ain't nobody going to help you. Just throw you out on the streets and you're going to be the bitch on the corner. We're going to be laughing at and you're going to one day die of AIDS and just be ran through by every nigga in the neighborhood. And the white folks going to be laughing, continuing to do their little demonic rituals and child sacrifice. And we're going to ask them white people to give us some money. And we good. So, of course, he came and did what they all do. And he came uh, in the room and stood at the door. And he was like, um, well, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. And then I said, that's okay. You don't have to say nothing. And I said, uh, you want me to leave, right? And then he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, uh, it's just not working out. I said, nah, fuck that bullshit. Ain't no, it just ain't working out because we was just making love last night. So I'm thinking in my mind, I was like, and I told him, I said, nah, it ain't no, it ain't working out. I said, you a coward. You scared because you know that I'm pregnant for real. And you know what they did. And you got me up in here and you scared to just stand by me. So you trying to hurry up and put me out. And then so he started talking real bad, uh, talking about I got somewhere to stay. I got somewhere to stay. And I ain't finna go into all the details about his personal life because that's his business or whatever. But he was like, I got somewhere to be or whatever. Um you the one uh on you the one gonna be on the streets uh with nowhere to go. I said, baby, I'ma have somewhere to go. Because that's one thing that everybody that's been putting me out of their house, that did put me out of their house, they all was thinking, oh, she just going to be on the streets and how high she her and that baby ain't going to have nowhere to go, just being wicked. And I kept end up going somewhere, but I couldn't stay long once they figured out what happened. But I still would be on the streets periodically. But for the most part, I have somewhere to stay for at least a night or two. And then maybe I'll spend a night or two outside. I think the longest I spent outside was like three days up walking around. I hadn't slipped, I hadn't sat down nowhere and it was hurting. Sitting straight up on the bench, you know. And I made those videos when I was in Texas. So um, I told him, I said, no, that's okay. I said, uh, this is ridiculous. I said, uh, I started telling him about black people. I said, that's really sad that you sitting over here trying to put me out of the house when I told you, um, what, when you know what's going on. And I said, this is why we need people from uh, Africa to come over here or from some other country to come over here and help. 
And he said, well, uh, well, why don't you go to Nigeria then? And he was like, uh, hopefully you can have that baby, like just being very evil. And then he was like, why don't you? He started laughing and talking about, why don't you just go to Nigeria? And I said, bro, I said, I'm going to tell the right people what you over here saying. How you talking slick about me and this child talking about, oh, ha, 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 these white folk giving me this and these white folk giving me that. And you a black man over here laughing, talking about these white folk giving you all this shit. And you gonna put me and my baby out on the streets for these white folks so we don't have no help. And he was like, um, nah, you ain't trying to help yourself. He said, you ain't trying to get that baby no medical care. I said, nah, that's the excuse that y'all are trying to make. Because everybody knows that they not giving me the medical care. They not going to give me the medical care. And they know they've been trying to hurt this baby in all the facilities. So um, I was like, nah, that's okay. That's cool. I was like, because I'm going to tell the right people. I got you. Don't worry about it. Because you're going to have to answer for what you did. You're going to have to answer for me and this child. And I had went and got all my food out of the freezers um, that I had bought and I put it, um, on the table and I ain't have time, but I was going to film, I was, I'm going to charge my phone up and I'm going to get ready and I'm going to leave and I was going to film all my food on this table and I was, and I told him, I said, I'm going to expose you. I will, I'm going to expose everything you saying. So I was going to record him over there laughing, talking about why don't you just go to Nigeria then and, uh, uh, talking about, um, he don't care about them poisoning me and my baby and these white folk giving him this. And I said, see, y'all black men out of line. I said, y'all out of line. And God said that he was going to bring true judgment on all the black people that know what they did to my baby and decided that they was going to try to be my enemy. God said that swift destruction was going to come upon them. And they, they going to know, too. They going to know as well but uh it also has something to do with false gods and stuff like that and i told him i said i was like you ain't no man of god and um he came in there when i was getting my stuff trying to snatch my clothes talking about it was his and i was like nah this my stuff and i showed him that was it that it was my clothes that i was getting i was not touching his stuff and he let go of my stuff and i put started putting my stuff in my bag and he was calling me he was like man this my stuff. i said first of all i was like i ain't no man and then i said and you ain't no man and then i told him i was like no i said you are he tried to say uh um you know make it you know it, it don't make no sense to try to say nothing that he was saying because everything he was saying was just basically trying to make fun of me and the baby you know and that's just demonic as hell and i already told y'all how he be talking about satan be all talking to him and all this all kind of stuff so he's borderline satan it's like he he he's a believer but he's he's like lukewarm you know like one of them people that satan can easily influence in the wrong direction but who can be very powerful in the kingdom of god if he would actually walk in the power of Christ. So I just told him the truth and I just had to let it out. I said, no, y'all black men are cowards in America. Y'all are cowards. Y'all scary. I said, y'all should be standing up for us. I said, if any, if anything, you should be out there standing up for me, not putting me out on the street. And I said, you a coward. And you ain't doing this because I did nothing to you. You ain't putting me out because it ain't working out. I said, you putting me out because you're scared. Because you a coward. I said, y'all black men are cowards. You are cowards. When you find out that somebody did something to one of yours, I said, I'm a black woman. He said, no, nah, you just pregnant by a white man. And this your fault. And you got to deal with it. I said, no. Nah. This ain't got nothing to do with me being pregnant by a white man. I'm a black woman and they tried to murder me and my child. That's what this is about. So y'all ain't finna try to say, oh, she brought it upon herself because she got pregnant by a white man. I said, no, y'all cowards. And y'all too scared to stand up for people when y'all see them white people doing stuff wrong to us. So the only thing you could try to do is hurry up and get rid of me to try to make yourself feel better as a man. Because you know, as a man, that's dead ass wrong. And he was just trying to laugh it off, time I go to Nigeria or go to some other African town he named. And he was laughing, trying to make it seem like Africans was beneath him or some shit. 
talking about these white folk giving him money and these white folk doing this for him. So why should he care about me and my baby? And I said, that's all right. That's okay. I said, because God going to judge you. I'm not worried about that. And uh, he was like, yeah, whatever. And that's what they do when they think that, you know, these white folk going to successfully kill you and your child. Black people, this is why I'm like that black right movement, man. That shit is so fucking fraud, man. It is so fucking fraud. They don't stand up for no motherfucking body for real. When somebody dead, they money hungry, grubbing asses come out the woodwork begging everybody to give you them money. And then the people who child was actually a victim gotta go sue your ass in court to try to get something. And you got people who really is going through issues reaching out to the NAACP and all these people and then they turn your ass away. But if you dead, they look at that as a way that they can gather money for themselves. And so, you know, I felt the same thing I feel every time. But it's good that we was going over Joshua and Caleb and Moses and the, and the people of Israel in the wilderness because... This is how they was. They would not stand up for each other. Moses killed an Egyptian protecting one of his own brethren. But guess what they turned around and did? They fighting each other. And Moses told them not to fight each other. And what they do? They went and told on Moses after he was protecting them. I already know how black folks is, man. I already know. It's mind conditioning to where we they still play them slave movies. Uh, they, they, the only thing they done ever taught us about our history is how they done hurt us and, 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 and did stuff to us, which is psychological warfare to keep our being afraid to stand up for us. I ain't telling our men to go out and do nothing to these folk. But when it's the time to stand up for one of your own, it's the time to stand up for one of your own, period. And I have a son. And I knew... Uh, what it was and he, he 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 was trying to turn it around on me just like Barbara was because when when I told Barbara everything they did my aunt and she saw that I was pregnant she tried to hurry up and put me out of her house too out of fear and she came out and said she was like uh oh, she was like you ain't gonna have that baby in my house but if they you take me to the hospital they're gonna try to discredit everything that I'm putting out online they're gonna try to lie and then try to say she ain't pregnant and I am and I'm not gonna go through that shit again I'm going to just expose it. And if I give birth, I give birth. I might need to be induced. I might need to get a C-section. I don't know. But I'm pregnant. And they denying this medical care. And I didn't want to tell nobody. It's been very stressful on me. Because black people love to just hear your story and then go run off and start talking shit about you. Instead of talking about how they can help. Or, you know, they think, oh, if, if I take you to some facility that's helping. No, it's not. You getting on social media and making some videos and exposing the fact that they denying me medical care, that's helping. You getting on your Facebook page and posting my story, that's helping. You going up to one of these courthouses or something and filing a petition, that's helping. You sending the story to the news and demanding them to put out the correct information, that's helping. You getting with a group of your brothers and sisters and coming together and deciding that we're going to come together and decide that we're going to start a movement for Andrea Jones, that's helping. But sending me up into some facility where they're going to turn around and lie and send me right back home with this baby and me, calling me crazy, that's not helping. And I'm not doing that again. So I went up and I went and he was in the bathroom uh, getting ready to go to work because he had got a job. And I went up in the bathroom and I was finna go. And I told him, I said, before I leave, I said, I'm going to say this on behalf of all black people. And I said, I'm going to ask you a question on behalf of all black people. He was like, well, I ain't standing for all black people. I ain't speaking for all black people. I don't fool with all black people. I'm like, no, nah, but you black. So I'm asking you this, and I'm going to say this to you on behalf of our people. And he didn't want to listen, but I made him. And I walked in the bathroom, and I held his face, and I looked at him. I said, you a man. You a black man. You ain't no coward. Ain't no you just gonna throw me and this baby out on the street and you know they trying to kill us. And I started crying. I 
I told him, I said, you a black king, you a king, you a black man. You ain't finna cower and throw me out on the street. And he said, he said oh, he wasn't scared. He just kind of don't know what to do because he know that I'll explain to y'all a little bit more about what his fears and stuff was after I get done telling y'all what I told him. And when I started crying, like when the tears just started coming out of my eye, he just immediately was like, I'm sorry. He was like, I'm sorry. He was like, I'm sorry, baby. And he started hugging me like, I ain't mean to make you cry. And he was like, I'm not putting you out. I'm not putting you out. Put your food back up. Go on back in there and lay back down. Lay your ass back down in that bed. And we talked about it. And I was like, how I know you're not going to change your mind and ask us to leave again. He was like, I'm not going to ask y'all to leave. And he wanted to know a little bit more, like, what's going on with these hospitals and why how you know they won't help you here in uh georgia and i told him i said because it's a government thing where these racist white people run the country he was like well how they know and i told him i said well when i shot this white male they took me in the back of the jail and decided that the media decided the united states i said you know how the news is when stuff happened with black people, they try to lie about it. So they had me in the back of the jail and the United States government was aware of what was going on because I shot a gun, a black woman shot a gun and a white male got hurt. So the United States government was notified of what happened. And they decided that they were going to try to change the story and just murder me and lie about it on the news. And he understood because he knows what they do. He knows that they be making up stories. And so he was like, oh, OK, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, so they decided that they was not going to tell the truth that I was with child. And they was not going to tell the truth that this young white man was abusing me and my and my son. And they decided they were just going to all lie and cover it up. And that's how they, decide, they decided to deny me medical care and not confirm my pregnancy while I was in the jail. And then they just dug themselves in a deeper hole to where when I was released, they continued to deny me the medical care. And he was like, but how you know they won't give you care in Georgia? I said, because... Uh, the very important leaders of our country knew what was going on and they decided that they was going to set it up to where they would deny me medical care in all of the hospitals. And every time I went to a hospital, they was already ready to deny it and they already knew who I was and why I was coming up to the hospital. And uh, I told him, he was like, well, how you know they ain't going to give you care here? I told him, I said, they tried to set me up and have me killed when I came to Georgia. They tried to set me up and have me killed in Little Rock. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. God already said that they would be trying to do stuff to me all over America because they all run off of one government. So if one state is denying you, all of the states is going to deny you. It's going to have to be somebody very brave who have the medical uh, license or who have the medical knowledge to help us to just jump the system and help us anyway. And I told him, I was like, uh, they, they, they tried to set me up in the women's program out here. They had police officers following me. People tried to attack us when I came to Atlanta. And that's when I realized that Georgia was doing it as well. And I have exposed a lot of vis, uh, vi videos about the uh, Atlanta Police Department and how they were also trying to work with the United States government to try to cover up my pregnancy. They were trying to stage arrests. They had me and trying to set me up as a prostitute while they was leaving me out of the shelters on the streets with nowhere to go. So when I explained to him this, he, he started to understand, but I had to let him know. I said, I'm not going back into another hospital where they're going to deny me. And he was like, but you need to have that baby. He was like, you got to get a birth to that baby. And I said, yeah. I was like, if I get induced, he was like, but what if the baby not ready yet? I said, exactly, because I'm so small. And then so I was like, uh, if we could have a midwife or a doctor or somebody to help us, that would be good. But you don't know who to trust after somebody try to crush your belly. You don't even really want nobody to even touch on you at that point, you know. Um, and I explained to him that they had off uh, uh, female uh, officers trying to jump on me 
who worked at the women's program. They were I told him women were trying to fight me at the women's program in Georgia. And that's when I really, really, really realized they are really trying to set me up uh, in Georgia is what I already knew but when they was over there trying to attack me and fight my baby I was like this is just ridiculous man y'all some fucking idiots you a fucking coward if I was not pregnant man she have no idea bro because for you to sit there and try to threaten to jump on me just because I'm a black woman that went through all of this and I came in your shelter and y'all don't want to catch no flack from these white folks about having me there they brought all these white people in the shelter and they started plotting on me about how they was gonna get me out of the shelter back on the streets to where they could prey on me and leave me outside and you know, it kind of hurt me to have to uh, continue to explain to him um, why they wanted to cover it up. And I told him that God said that my baby daddy was going to prison for abusing. God said my baby daddy was going to jail for abusing women. And they was trying to make him look like the victim. They was trying to make it seem like my baby daddy was the one who... They, when I when he got shot, everybody was running around like, oh, Andrea shot her baby daddy. She crazy. She crazy. And I said, but God said he going to jail for abusing women. I said, so they tried to kill me and cover up the fact that he was abusing me. He was abusing my child. There was a witness and I'm pregnant. So I said, imagine if the media covered the story like that and said this young white male was attacking a black woman and her 22 month old baby and she was pregnant and she shot him who is the victim now so that's why they needed to try to kill me and take my baby from me like i was crazy and keep me from my little boy and then deny me medical care and try to kill my baby because racist white america always tries to paint the white people as if they're the victims and when they're the fucking terrorists half the fucking time I just saw a story uh, about an Atlanta shooting on anti-Asian uh, uh, attacks. And they were saying a young white male, 21 years old, shot an Asian. Or I didn't really see the whole story, but I know it had something to do with an Asian. And they was trying to say that, make excuses for this young white male and try to make it seem like he was a child. But someone made a very good statement and said, but if it was a 21-year-old black male that shot someone, they would be calling him a monster. So my baby daddy was attacking me, and when he got shot, they were trying to make it seem like he was a child. But if it was a black male attacking his white baby mama and he was 21 years old, they would be trying to paint him out as fucking Freddy Cougar. But with a white male, they tried to kill me and my baby, cover up the evidence. They took my son all so they could try to paint the story out to make him like he was the victim. And God is the God of justice. God is the God of vengeance. God is the God of righteousness. And the Holy Spirit is not going to stop working. I'm not a paranoid schizophrenic. God is with me. The Holy Spirit was sent to help us. He gave up the ghost to be with us, to counsel us. And that's what's going on. And I am like the walking dead to these people because they have an agenda and they want to cover it up. The media needed to cover the story correctly. But what they did was they put the story on the local news in Conroe, Texas. And I don't know how far it spread, but they put the story on the local news when the shooting happened. They brought me into jail pregnant and bleeding and then uh, turned around and put a story on the news saying that I shot that I shot him and I was going to jail for a long time and that some then started trying to tell people that I was crazy and they tried to paint him out as if he was not a uh hair like he wasn't on methamphetamine uh shooting needles in his arms he got uh drug charge death charge assault family violence class c rape uh, he was convicted for assault on a public servant trespassing he was convicted for unlawful restraint and they sitting over here was trying to paint him out to be like he was some schoolboy, like he was some Harvard graduate or some shit Yale or some shit while they trying to paint me out on some Hollywood set in the back of the fucking jail, which is why I was telling y'all it was a lot of celebrities involved because y'all know how Hollywood is. Um, these people get paid to make you think their lives are a certain way in the media and then they try to kill people who know the truth about how their lives really are so 
they were trying to do the same thing for my baby daddy and these women and people in Conroe to try to keep their image to make it seem like my baby daddy was this perfect father and all of this stuff and try to kill me and paint the black woman out to be crazy, loud mouth, stupid black woman. Who cares? Another black woman is dead. Who cares? Another black woman is in jail. Who cares? Another black child is snatched from their mother. Who cares? Another black baby dies in the womb. Who cares? Another black family don't give a fuck about their own sister or brother getting murdered by the fucking KKK. Who fucking cares? That's how slick they think they is. They think they can do whatever they want and then they can just do whatever they want to black people and get away with it to where you're going to try to create a fucking set. A whole fucking Hollywood set. And that's why I've been exposing a lot of them uh, through the Holy Spirit because they in these covens and these covens run the entire country and they, they knew, they told them folks what happened. They all knew what happened and they decided let's not put the real story on the news. Let's take down the old story or let's just hide everything. We're not going to expose what really took place. And that's what they do. They uh, constantly put black men in jail. Uh, and it's a lot of black men that do be doing stuff they don't got no business doing now. But there are constant stories cycling, recycling all over the Internet of black men who were innocent, that were sent to prison, or who were incarcerated or wrongfully arrested or charged for crimes they didn't commit that were profiled or that had good reason to protect themselves and they constantly lie about it on the news and you know uh, I had someone from the news station come to me in a vision and tell me that they could not cover the story because of the covens and because of the, the these witches and these sorcerers that um, they serve the devil and they have to try to keep putting out the type of stories on the news that suits the white people and the Satanists in our country to make them look like they're always the heroes and all of that bullshit. And that's the same thing that they're trying to do with whatever white male shot somebody. You know, they'll, they, they, got his, they got his little mug shot of this young white kid and that's how they calling him a kid. He ain't no kid. And I don't know why he shot that person. I don't know what went down, so I'm not going to reiterate about that. I don't know if it was self-defense or if it was just a fucking hate crime. I don't fucking know. But they tried to make it seem like when I shot my baby daddy, like it was a hate crime. And it was not a hate crime. I am pregnant. He was attacking me and my child. And that showed me how deeply sold out the people in Hollywood is. Because God showed me they were serving Satan and they was all willing to help. The United States cover up my pregnancy and help them take my child from me um, and try to have me out on the streets because they get paid to play roles. They get played. They get paid to just act stuff out. That's not really what really happened. And the first people that they went and got to help them do that was all them damn celebrities. And they got all the black ones. The white ones was involved, but they got the black ones to do their dirty work. So it was black celebrities all in Texas coming all around me with masks on and shit. Like, I ain't know who the fuck they was trying to help these white folk kill me and shit. This is some fucking bullshit. And they had it all set up. And this is how they do it in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? They want to be on the big screen so fucking bad that anytime these white people give them a job to do where they can get paid, they're doing very sinister stuff off camera that people don't even fucking know about. They so good at acting and playing, playing, playing shit off that they be acting in, in these roles of the deaths of these African-American people. And these same celebrities that get paid to act on the fucking television screen and make you believe whatever you looking at and feel so emotional about a movie that they in. These same actors and singers and rappers that's in these videos and shit. They the same ones that's pretending like they give a fuck about these people that they set up and had fucking killed on their uh, Instagram pages and shit. These people don't care. They vampires. And every time somebody get in some shine about something, they'll run out the woodworks and try to, oh, give the person a gift. So somebody be like, oh, this person gave this person something just so they could be in the limelight. These people do anything to be in the limelight and get some fucking money. And they came running out the fucking woodworks, man. 
to try to help these white people act out this scene to make it look like I was crazy and to cover up my baby and to cover up this white man attacking us. They And y'all see how they worship white people in the media. These rappers got white girls all in their video. They marrying them. Uh, you know, these black women in the uh, entertainment industry, they all wearing white woman wig all on their head. Now, I get my white woman wig every now and then, too, but they obsessed about that shit. You know, they bleaching their skin, they cutting their face up to make their face look like white women. You know, they wearing blue eyes and green eyes, and they so obsessed with white people that they would do anything for these people, man. And when them white people told them black folks... Uh, to try to, to help them stage uh, my murder and to cover up that this white man was hurting me. They all came together to try to make him out to be the victim. and But they had to get rid of the real victim, me and my child, in order to pull that shit off. So... I understand he told me to lay down and everything, but I asked him, I was like, how do I know that you're not going to um, ask me to leave again? You know, um, because this is very serious and people don't usually stand by your side when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, especially when people of the world are involved. A lot of people will choose the world over you. And when they know that it's celebrities involved and high politicians and stuff like that, people who were supposedly black leaders who are trying to sit back and hope this can go through instead of helping me, you know, it's exposing everything. The walls of America is coming down like Jericho with the Andrea Jones case. If my baby survive, but if my baby dies, and if I'm silenced, then they all can go on pretending like they really care about black lives and pretend like they real black leaders and pretending like you was the real first black president and the first first lady, but you really don't give a fuck about us. They don't give a fuck about us. They never did. Most people will choose the world, and they'll be like, well, I want to go ahead and just be with all of them. And when I was listening to uh, the Israelite brothers, I didn't really want to listen to them out loud. I usually put my headphones on, and he was trying to say all kind of stuff against them. And this is what everybody do when they see the Israelite brothers go out there and preaching for black women and children and black men. They'll start talking bad about the Israelite brothers and going up in their face and trying to argue with them. But them people that's trying to argue with the Israelite brotherhood, they don't care about us. They don't care about our people. As long as they getting paid and they got money and cars in America and they good, everybody's supposed to be one and unified, right? But what about those of us whose skin tone was just a little bit too dark? Or what about us niggas that didn't... Uh, amount to anything to these white folks. See, it's like a plantation field where they pick us. They pick which one of us they feel is worth this and worth that. And the ones that done got picked for something and they getting paid and shit, they don't give a fuck about the rest of us. They don't. And a lot of them Israelite brothers probably do have money and came from good background and just chose to do it because it was a calling on their life to do it. And that take a lot of courage to say I'm not going.